A recent report by Howard Beck has come out stating every team's salary cap issues come this offseason with players to re-sign or positions they need. One team that stood out to me and I really wanted to focus on was the New Orleans Pelicans who were probably going to have to choose between Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram at the end of this season. That is a massive decision to make and we're going to break down everything that that could entail in this episode of Courtside Digest. I'm your host Joey Mercer. Before we get into it there today, I just want to say that about 94% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. So if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, make sure to go down below, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and every single time we upload, you'll be able to stay up to date with our takes and keep you up to date on the NBA. That's the league we all know and love here, and the sport we love of basketball. So without further ado, let's get into the topic at hand there today, and that is Pelicans in Salary Cap Trouble. So I didn't realize how bad it actually was because the Pelicans are not necessarily known as a perennial playoff team by any means, but they do have a solid team and are having a solid season. They have some young guys on the roster and they definitely like to keep that young core together. But are they going to be able to keep everybody there with the salary cap the way it is right now? I don't think so. This started out by a tweet by NBA Central saying New Orleans has to make a decision between Zion and Ingram. I think that happens this summer, and that was by Eastern Conference Executive. When I clicked on the link, it brought me to an article by Howard Beck, which really surprised me, and the quote in it said, The same goes for the rising New Orleans Pelicans, who have three pricey stars and a surplus of talented young players who will be getting big raises soon. A major strain for a small market team that's allergic to paying the luxury tax. New Orleans has to make a decision between Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram, said an Eastern Conference exec. I think that happens this summer. And it seems like it really could. When I looked at the SPO track to break down contracts for them, you can see these are the players that are expiring this offseason. So they're going to have to sign Valanchunas, but they have his bird rights. Cody Zeller, I don't think that they'll re-sign him, of course. Uh, they do have a club option, Alvarado, which I think they're going to pick up at $2 million. And Najee Marshall is also there, who they have his bird rights, but they're going to have to re-sign. When we looked into it a little more, you could see exactly what everybody is making this season. CJ is making about $36 million, Zion $34, Ingram $34, Valanchunas $15, Herb Jones $12, and Larry Nance Jr., 10. And those are the guys, of course, that are making above 10. And Najee Marshall's down there making almost $2 million, but will have to be re-signed, and he's been very solid for them overall. When we look into the luxury tax totals so far this season, they still have just a little under $3 million of luxury tax space for this year. But when we look at the salary cap totals overall for this season you can see that they're paying out almost 175 million dollars and are 39 million dollars above the current cap they are just under 10 million dollars a uh, still cap space allowed in the hard cap for the first apron and in the second apron we can see there that they have 20 million dollars this year so overall it's not terrible for the team that they have could be probably a little bit better but I think they have some guys on solid contracts for sure and are making the best of them but when we look at next season who's signed we have that non-guaranteed money for Zion Williamson which is only guaranteed of 18.3 million so they're going to have to work out some sort of an extension with him come this offseason I don't think he's going to be able to agree on all the terms with that and even so you only have him for that one year Brandon Ingram is signed and CJ McCollum is also signed to $33 million. Herb Jones going up to 13. Larry Nance Jr. at 11, which is starting to get a little bit pricey for him. Daniel still at 6. Murphy at 5. And then nobody else really making any money, of course. But, what does that exactly look like for them next season cap-wise? We could see that they have some cap holds in 2024 to 25, and those are the ones you can see break down right there. Valanciunas is a cap hold of 23 million, and then nobody else is really that much, but it does add up to a little bit of money. You're looking at right there almost $20 million in cap space extra, and that is not exactly what you're looking at there for the holds. That's a lot of money there. That's about $50 million in cap holds. That is a decent bit for a team to have under their belt. But when we look into exactly the luxury tax totals for next year, they still have $21 million in the luxury tax, which isn't too crazy, but that's still without Najee Marshall or Jonas Valanciunas signed. When we look into the total salary cap totals, 
you can see that they will be paying out almost $200 million by the time it's all said and done. The cap space will be $52 million in the hole. The second apron space is a little bit higher at nearly $40 million. But then you look at the practical cap space at the maximum possibility is only six and a half million dollars. They are in a bit of a salary cap issue when it comes to next season. And that's not exactly what you want to hear if you're a fan of the New Orleans Pelicans. When you have a guy like Zion that's on a non-guaranteed for next year, which there's a few different things going on with that contract. And Brandon Ingram looks like he's solidified there, but they're going to have to make a decision because they aren't going to have a center even signed on the roster unless you're really talking yourself into Larry Nance Jr., who I would not want to be happy with starting at center. They're going to try to get back Jonas Valanciunas, and he's going to want probably around $20 million, as I think that's around the value of what he's worth, maybe just a little bit below, but that is fair for him to ask of that money with players around the league at the center position making similar uh, uh, money on newer contracts, of course. The first player that we're going to break down here is Brandon Ingram. That little badge that you see there in yellow under the team, the New Orleans Pelicans and small forward, means he's one of the better offensive players in the league. He's just 26 years old and is at 6'7", only 190 pounds, but with a 7'3 wingspan. That is a great size out of Ingram. I mean, you can see how he's playing this season. He has dipped a few in the points per game, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that Zion Williamson has played more this season. We can actually see that... Brandon Ingram is shooting 49% from the field, a master from the mid-range, of course. 36% from three is still very solid. 79% from the field, or free throw, sorry. Five rebounds, six assists, and 21 points per game. That is still very productive out of Brandon Ingram. And what does that all mean when it comes to the advanced metrics around that? Well, we can see that he's actually in the 93rd percentile on offensive plus minus. He is in the 79th percentile for passer rating. He is in the 92nd for creation, 93rd for his load management on the team. How much of the load the offense is he carrying? Turnovers is just about league average, and he's not grabbing many offensive rebounds, nor is he taking many threes. But that free throw rate is still very solid, the 72nd percentile, and the shot quality and true shooting percentage is still very solid, in my opinion, just above league average from a lot of shots out of him. On the defensive end, he isn't that good of a player, but that's okay. That's why you have those younger defensive pieces like Herb Jones around him. The deflections, 37th percentile. Does he cause turnovers? No, 16th percentile. Defensive rebounding is about league average, and he can't protect the rim that well with the league average block percentage and lower in the rim defensive categories, and his versatility on defense is still very solid. Does he foul often on defense? No, but he's also not playing too much defense, so that's kind of a catch-22 there if you ask me in my opinion. Now, when we look more into Zion Williamson, how does he compare to uh, Brandon Ingram? Brandon Ingram was 93rd percentile on offense and 32nd on defense. Look at Zion. He's also one of the better offensive players in the league. Plays power forward at just 6'6", six six with a 6'11 wingspan, but he's also 284 pounds and strong as an ox, of course. Only 23 years of age. We can see here that he is putting up 22 points, very similar to Brandon Ingram, shooting 59% from the field with barely any threes, so that 36% I take with a grain of salt, of course. 68% from the free throw line isn't that great, but you can get by on it. He does get there a fair amount. Six rebounds a game, five assists. The rebounds you would hope to be a little bit better, but obviously Valanciunas is out there a lot of the time as well, and he is still having a very, very good season. When we look at the breakdown, it's the exact same offensive and defensive plus minus, 93 and 32. Interesting to see. The true shooting's much better on Zion, but the shot quality is one of the worst I've seen in the league because he's taking so many shots around the rim. It's not versatile, the amount of shots that he's taking. It's barely any jump shots, so that's why that shot quality is so low. He gets to the free throw line a whole lot at the 93rd percentile, but only converts on about 68% of those. And the three-point attempted rate is basically non-existent. He grabs a lot of offensive rebounds, which is great to see out of a guy that's only six foot six. And when he tries to create, he does turn it over a little bit too much. He carries a big portion of the load on the team at the 89th percentile, 77 in his creation. 
uh, rating out of the league, of course, when he's trying to create for the team. It's in the 77th percentile. His portability isn't as high because, once again, he's not taking any jump shots. And his passer rating is right around Brandon Ingram's, just below it, at the 74th percentile. His deflections are actually league average, and when he tries to cause defensive turnovers, the 84th percentile is very very good i didn't think it would be that high his offensive rebounding is very solid as is his rim defense but his frequency and block percentage are below league average as well as his versatility because his defense is not that great and also the play style that he has with his height is more um perimeter oriented which is really strange to see out of a guy like zion that likes to jump so high but that's just exactly the way it is and he does foul a fair amount as he's in the 40th percentile for that Overall, I would try to move Zion if I were the New Orleans Pelicans, just to sum things up. I do think with the non-guaranteed contract and the fact that he can't create shots as much, I think it definitely gives you a lower ceiling than that of Brandon Ingram, who is great from the mid-range, but can also turn into a very good three-point shooter if needed. I think he can create a bucket down the stretch more if you need him to, and has more defensive tools and willingness than that of Zion, even though the plus-minus is the same. I would definitely want to build around Ingram, who is three years old, Older, more so than Zion at this stage in their career because I do believe it's easier to build a team around Ingram than a guy like Zion who has to play power forward and has to work around the rim. This has been your host Joey Mercer. Let me know what you think of who the Pelicans should choose if it comes to that decision based on their cap uh, their cap promises of course and where they're going to be above that luxury tax next season. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I want to hear from all of you guys for sure. Uh, like the video if you did of course. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all in the next one. So I know.